life is not to be better than somebody else. The goal of life is to be a better you, than you today than you were yesterday. This has been my motto in life and this has been the secret behind my success in any and every aspect of life that I have taken so far. <clears throat> so I want to ask you, if this has been my motto of success, can this not be yours as well? I see a few nods, I see a few faces. Okay, so I'll ask a few questions and get us, get the flow going. Why do you think that instead of just giving you people a speech topic or suggestions, we had a masterclass today? Why are we having a masterclass right now? Table number one, if you could tell me. Tell me, not each other. So that we can give the best performance, okay, great. Table number two. Why do you think before putting you on stage, we are having a master class? To familiarize with our surrounding. Excellent, familiarize yourself with your surrounding. Table number three. Uh, I feel that uh, it's a uh, time for all of us to learn. Okay. And uh, also to be a better us, to better Two? ourselves. Excellent. Table number four. to find out more about yourself, like your abilities and what you're good at and how you can express your ideas better. Your strength and weakness, right? So basically what you're trying to say is the reason we have a master class today is so that we empower you and you overcome whatever weaknesses you have and enhance your strengths, right? Does anyone know what the word phobia means? A raise of hand. In simple words, fear. Anyone else? Whatever you're going to say. Same thing? Okay. So basically, a phobia is either an anxiety disorder or a fear of an object or a situation. Now, there's so many phobias out there in the world. People have all kinds of phobias, fear of spiders, fear of cockroaches, fear of heights. I'm going to name a few and I'm going to see if you know them. So there's one phobia that is called ergophobia. Has anyone heard of that? Ergophobia? Anyone? A guess by the name? Aliasan? By the way, if you don't look at me and look out in space or look anywhere else, that's going to make me pick you even more, huh? So look at me with a smile and act confidence, even if you don't know the answer and I won't pick on you. No, no, no. And that's something you and I would never even come across. Ergophobia is the fear of doing work. A lot of us go through that in Ramadan, but that's another thing. Okay, there's another phobia, globophobia. Any idea what that is, Hussein? So much fun when I know your names. Globophobia. Anyone, globophobia? Do not Google it on your phones, huh? Close, fear of balloons. Okay, yet another phobia is plutophobia. There's no way anyone would know this. And I personally love this phobia. Plutophobia is the fear of money. Now, a disclaimer, please do not record this. Anybody here has plutophobia, fear of money? See me at the end of the session. Judges and organizers as well. I will help take your money and get rid of this phobia. 
But the phobia that is prevailing to today's session is glossophobia, which is, what do you think? Fear of public speaking, right? So that is why we are here to empower you and help you get over this phobia. Now, when you are going to give a presentation, you have to think of your speech as though it's a monster. So this here is our monster for today. Supposed to look scary, unfortunately it's not, it's kind of cute. But then again, it's your mindset. If you look at your monster as a scary thing, it's going to be scary. If you look at your monster as something that you can combat and deal with, it's going to be something that you can do. So when you go into battle, or when you go into any challenge, what do you do? You think of how you're going to overcome it. So if you're going into battle with this particular monster, what is the first thing you're going to try and do? Table number four. What is the first thing you would do if you were going into battle with this monster? Anyone? Find its weaknesses. Very good. Find its weaknesses. Well done. Table number two. Now that you know its weakness, whatever the weaknesses of this monster, what is the next strategy you're going to apply? I try and find ways to exploit that weakness. Fantastic. Find ways to exploit it. Table number three. Suppose there are ways you can't exploit. This normal people have two legs. This particular monster seems to have quite a few. And you want to exploit it. What are you going to do? Cut its legs. Keep in mind, this is just a small monster by my side. When you're actually facing a monster, it's a pretty huge monster. So then, how would you go about cutting its legs? You're right, Siraj, but how? But whatever comes to mind, think. It's do or die. It's in front of you. I think, I think using a certain weapon. Brilliant. So you did have the answer, right? So basically, when you have a monster facing you, as the table number four said, find out a little about it. Strategize. Once you have a strategy, plan how you're going to go about it. Defeat it, and you've conquered your monster. Right? So this is a monster. Now put this in your public speaking um, theme, or public speaking topic, or public speaking whatever that you're going to use and imply the same strategies. My topic for today is content, structure, and presentation. Before getting into that, I would like to show you something else and hopefully get some more answers. So, here I have a few gifts. Now, these are some pretty, pretty amazing gifts, huh, I must say. Um, and I would want, I mean, those who know me know I don't just give anything. I give something really, really nice. So I want you all to pick, but well not all, whoever I come across is going to pick one. And trust me, you are going to love my gifts. Okay? Now, before picking them, I want you to keep two things in mind. Structure and presentation. Okay? That's what I'm trying to explain to you over here. So... Can I have someone from table number four come and pick a gift? Any gift you want. Guys, come on. Normally when people are giving food and gifts, you should be the first one. It's when people are sending you a bill, that's when you should be the last one. Free stuff, right? Free stuff, yeah. Great. Before you pick, just think. Which one do you think, looking at the bag, looking at the shape, would have something best? Okay, don't open it, just stand there. Can I have someone from the third table? Do not open the gifts, just hold on to it as they are. 
Look at the packing and then hold on to it. Do not peek. Can I have from this table? In the spirit of gender equality, I suggest the next two tables sent through. Too late. <laughs> Too late. And can I have someone from this table? Shin, but it looks like the women are afraid of your gifts. I can see. I, I don't know I can why. see. Doesn't matter. Can I have again someone from that table? And can I have someone from this table? Any gift you think you like. Great. Now, I would like one by one, I would like you to open up your gift. Hold the gift in one hand and the bag in the other. Hold it up so everyone can see. Wow. It's a bag of pasta, macaroni. Can you open your gift, please? <laughs> the pandemic taught us one thing. Everyone in Europe stocked up on tissue roll. Very important, right? Can you open your gift? Ooh, this is perfect for you. You need to take it home. A pack of gum. Can you open yours? <laughs> this is going to help you after it starts today. <laughs> Dishwashing sponge. Can you open yours? Reese's. Oh, I need to take these back. A pack of Reese's. Which one of you thinks you had the best gift? Who do you think had the best gift? Why do you think so? Wipe away all your problems, okay. A meal for a whole family. A meal for a whole family. Anyone else? Of course it's yours. It's yours. Take it. m and are for you. So you can enjoy your after iftar treat. There you go. If you're opening it right now, I'm not watching. You can take your gifts and please go to your seats. But if you saw the content of the gifts and if you compare it to the bags that they were in, did they match? Do you think they matched? Who got the tissue roll? Can you hold up the box that you got it in? Such a pretty box. But the gift inside was not that great, right? Who got the paper bag with the uh, M&Ms? The bag wasn't all that great. But the gift inside was amazing. Who got the cute little blue bag with the Reese's inside? The bag was cute, so was the gift inside, right? What does that tell us about content, presentation, and structure? That these are things that go hand in hand. To make a successful speech or to give a great presentation, you have to keep in mind that all these factors are like the four wheels of a car, or they are like a pair of legs for you to stand, walk, and run on. Now, a car, if you suddenly have a flat tire and it's going, it will go on for some time, even with the punctured tire. If you are handicapped by one leg, you will still move forward. You will still be able to participate in a race or dance or walk, whatever. But you won't be as fast or as graceful as a regular car with four wheels or as a person with two normal legs. Agreed? So for you to be able to do that, what you have to keep in mind is when you, as Dr. Zoreda said, is when you are preparing, you keep all the factors in mind. It's not just about how you say it or what you say it, it's putting it all together. So basically, it's like facts sell or facts tell, but it's the stories that sell. 
So whenever you're doing a presentation, be it for work, be it for school, be it for entertainment, or be it for a competition, keep one thing in mind. The audience loves a story. Speaking of which, I'm going to give you a little anecdote I'm going to share with you about my own personal family. My son was three years old, and it was the month of Ramadan. So I told him that, look, Eid is approaching, and uh, as is our family custom, everyone's going to be giving you an envelope of money when you see them. So please make sure that you, treat, you show them that I've given you a good upbringing and you're respectful and whatever. When they give you that envelope, don't just take it. On Eid day, when you meet whichever family member, first say Eid Mubarak, they'll extend their hand. If they don't, you extend your hand. Take that hand, put it on your eyes, kiss it, say Eid Mubarak with a big smile, then take the envelope and come give it to me. It's like, okay, mom, comes Eid and we have a tradition that we go visit all the elders in the family. So we went to one elder's place and my kid made me so proud. Salam alaikum, Eid Mubarak, kissed everyone. And elderly people love respect. So they were like, oh, such a sweet, well brought up boy. My shoulders were up, my collar was up. This happened two, three, four houses. By lunchtime, we all gathered at one place to have lunch. Now my son stands at the door. Whoever comes, Salam alaikum, Eid Mubarak. Salam alaikum, Eid Mubarak. And one of the uncles comes and tells me, Shirin, your son there is asking for money all over again. And I go up and I'm like, what are you doing? He said, mom, you taught me that, you know, when guests come or when I meet any relative, I should hug them, kiss them, say Eid Mubarak with a big smile. None of them are giving me money. Like that was the first time. You can't every time you see someone say Eid Mubarak and accept, expect a handout or an envelope. My point here is that you have your content many a times prepared. But if it has no direction, it is wasted. I did my best to explain him the method of what's going to happen. I did not explain him the concept that it's not about the money. It's about the love. It's about the Eid atmosphere. It's about the culture and all. In his mind was, say Eid Mubarak, give a hug, get the money. So when you are doing your preparations, when you are writing your speech, when you are putting in your content, make sure that you know where your structure is going. It shouldn't be just an amazing thing, but when it comes off, it comes off very, very flat. There are a number of things that you need to keep in mind. Time management, eye contact, body language, your tone deflection. You know, when we, as Dr. Zorida said, when we prepare too many times, what happens is we start reading it like a poem or as though we are reading the newspaper or we are just reading it in a monologue. The whole point of speaking here is that the person should feel that you are speaking to them, not at them. So make sure you keep all these factors in mind and also remember the three P's of success. But before getting to the three P's of success, if I could have my picture, as you look at this lion, you will understand it's prepare, practice, and present. You can go from the lion on the top to a beautifully groomed lion at the bottom. And this is what you want in your speech. Best of luck, everybody. Thank you so much.